This is the FlipNerd.com Expert Real Estate Investing Show, the show for real estate investors. Whether you're a veteran or brand new, I'm your host, Mike Hambright, and each week I bring you a new expert guest that will share their knowledge and lessons with you. If you're excited about real estate investing, believe in personal responsibility, and taking control of your life and financial destiny, you're in the right place. This is episode number 357, and my guest today is Obi Dorsey, based out of Jacksonville, Florida. Now, so much of your ability to be successful as a real estate investor is determined by your mindset and what goes on between your ears. Real estate investing is a business where you can be told 95% of the time, no, and still be very successful. But that much rejection is not for the weary or the weak of stomach and causes a lot of people to quit before they've really given it a chance. Today we talk about mindset and the importance of good habits and routines. Now before you think we're getting too fluffy for you here, please know that uh, Obi has only been a real estate investor for three years and has done hundreds of deals already. So this is important stuff and I know you're gonna love today's show. Please help me welcome Obi Dorsey to the show. Obi, welcome to the show, glad to see you. Hey Mike. Man, I'm super thrilled to be here. Thanks for being uh, gracious with me and yeah, no uh, and adding me to the lineup this week. Yeah, yeah. G- good to see you. Uh, so we met in person a few months for the first time back at a few months at an event. And uh, I think we've probably been following each other or seeing each other on, on Facebook and running in some of the same circles for a while now. And I know we talked about having you on the show for a while, so um, I'm glad you're finally here. Yeah. No, man, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I, I get a ton of value from the content that you put out. Um, I'm on your, uh, I'm on your email list. I'm a subscriber to the podcast. Um, I'm probably, uh, I don't stalk you, but maybe just almost <laughs> that close to stalking. Yeah. But, well, uh, hey, no, we, you, it's not, we're not hard to stalk because we send out a lot of emails. I think you know that. <laughs> right. No, you do. Absolutely. No, but it's great stuff. It's great stuff. It's, it's one of those where it's, it's very content rich, which I think is, uh, it's super key. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I, thank you for that. And, and truthfully, couldn't do any of it without friends like you, without guys like you that could come on and share your information. So thanks for being here. Absolutely. Yeah, well, this is an, a great topic, talking about kind of the importance of mindset and just getting yourself into routines and rituals and doing things every day that are stepping stones towards your success. Because, you know, real estate investing can be a lonely business. And it's an easy business. If you kind of compare it to baseball or any other sport, like you can strike out like 95% of the time here and still do really well as a real estate investor. And that plays a lot of games. That plays a lot of games with your, with your mind, right? She just, it's when you're told no, 95% of the time, um, it, it can, it can wear you out. So, (laughs) Hey, before we jump into this, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of tell us how you got into real estate investing. Yeah. Um, so again, Obi Dorsey, uh, I own Freedom Real Estate Investing uh, with my wife and business partner, Shelby Dorsey. And we operate out of Jacksonville, Florida. And um, I've lived there for 12 years at this point and uh, been in real estate for actually full time real estate, like right now for three years. And, um, you know, I got into real estate essentially because I. Um, I was fed up and frustrated with uh, with working for somebody else and trading time for dollars, right? And I knew that I was never going to get ahead if I kept doing what I had done before. And um, so I, I kind of got sick of being sick and uh, and just decided that I had to do something for myself. And and frankly, uh, real estate offered um, some huge benefits to me because the the, uh, the point of entry was so low that it was within my means and um, you know, it, it, it just, uh, it, it was a great connection. So, yeah. What did, what did you do before you were a real estate investor? So I was in a, um, a insurance restoration, essentially like fire and water damage, uh, like okay. a sales and uh, general management role. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it, see the thing Mike was, it was, uh, it was what I fell into. It's not what I chose to be. Yeah. So, you know, there, yeah. yeah, there's always that like, well, what if, or, um, you know, like it, it was just not intentional. And so I, I, the more that I thought about it, the more that it irritated me that like I was, I was selling some really key years of my life and 
I was working a 60 hour a week job or even more sometimes, a lot of times. Yeah. And, um, I just wasn't, yeah. in, I wasn't in control and I wasn't steering my own destiny. And, um, man, when, when you wake up and you have that realization, it, it, it hits you pretty hard. And, uh, you know, the, the challenge that I was having, frankly, was that I was making really good money or what I consider to be really good money at the time. I was, you know, I was in the, you know, Know, 140, $150,000 a year job. So, you know, yeah. in, in my market, yeah. that's, that's pretty strong. It's almost like golden handcuffs, right? Like I had become accustomed to that standard of living. I couldn't, I couldn't do, I couldn't step away from it. I, you know, I had obligations and so forth. So, yeah. um, you know, yeah. I, I, frankly, I felt, I felt a little bit resentful and that's probably not the right word to use, but that's how I felt. And it was my, my own doing. So I resented myself <laughs> and then, um, you know, I also felt trapped, frankly, because, you know, I was responsible for, uh, a lot of, a lot of people, uh, that reported to me and I was responsible to my family and, and for providing for them. So, yeah. so all that's to say this, um, you know, I got, uh, I got, that's why what we're going to talk about today, I think is super key, um, because it, without the right mindset, you'll stop before you get started. Or yeah. if you get started, yeah. you won't have the 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 right. Uh, you won't be in the right mindset to continue when when it gets tough, and it gets tough. I mean, there's no tough. doubt about yeah. it. There's it our there. You you hit it on the head when you said earlier. You know, we get told no 95 percent of the time, and that's one aspect of it. But you know, people let you down. Uh, buyers let you down. Sellers let you down. Employees let you down. Um, you know, there's just the market cycle in general, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, there's a lot of honest people in this business, but there's a lot of not honest people in this business. Yep. And if you don't have that, yep. if you don't have that, that if you're not feeding your mind, good, positive stuff on a routine, regular basis, and you're not stacking that positive, uh, that positive energy, um, then I, I think. I think you're really setting yourself up for yeah, some disappointment. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Hey, before we kind of jump into uh, this a little more, maybe can you just share a minute or two to talk about your transition? Because I think there's a lot of people that are listening to this that resonate with what you just said. They they are comfortable, even if they're not making as much money as you did. They're just it's at least it's uh, it feels like it's reliable, right? Like you don't have to, oh, some, yeah, yeah. some people are stuck in a position where they don't have to change. They would like to change, but man, it's so much easier just to stay where I'm at. But talk about how you kind of made that transition. Yeah. So you, you hit on a couple key points, right? So like some, for some people, uh, it's certainty. Like they feel, um, that because they have a job and that because they have had a job for, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 years that, right. that, that they will have that job. And so, you know, a couple of years before I made this leap, um, you know, it, it came to my mind that, you know, first of all, no matter what space you're in, um, there is no guarantees. There is no certainty just because you've had that job for 20 years, you know, the boss comes in one day and, and they're not in a good frame of mind and you're out on the street or, um, you know, there's just a lot of different things that, that are beyond your control that can cost you what you think is a certain job. And so, absolutely. So in the back of my mind, uh, that was, that was real and true. And I knew that and I accepted that. So that was the first mindset shift that I made internally that got me on a platform like, okay, so what it's good. And so what I'm being paid good, that could really change, uh, pretty quickly. Right. Yep. And so the, the next key thing for me was, uh, from a mind mindset standpoint is, you know, it, it was kind of, um, uh, I don't want to put it like in a selfish way, but like it was, there's a significant aspect to doing what I, what I was doing and what I'm doing now. And the difference or the, the shift was, you know, whereas I'm contributing, uh, I don't know how to be, best describe it, but basically we get significance for, from our job and from what we do as men typically. Right. And so yeah. Uh, yeah. I needed, I needed to find something else that I could, uh, provide myself with that satisfaction from being significant, if that makes any sense at all. 
Yeah, yeah. So those two mind yeah. shift, those two mind shift pieces were the first part. But from a technical or from a uh, like, how did I do it? Well, I got some traction, right? So I framed, I got the mindset standpoint first, and then I put into action what I learned, and I got some traction. And when I was able to see some success and I was able to show my spouse some success and when I was able to uh, get a little bit of like, I, I went for about six months uh, before I went full time um, doing deals on the side. And so I yeah. got some of those deals done. I saw some results. And once I had proven that it proven concept that it was possible, then it was like, OK, get out of my way. I can do this, you know, so. Mindset, yeah. then action, yeah. then results, and then jump. Yeah, awesome, awesome. That's great. So let's talk. Let's talk a little more about mindset. So how um, do you want to do? You want to share from your experience um, how? Because what I hope that we talk about today is that people that are listening to this can um, take action from what you share with them today to learn how to how to improve their mindset. And this is all aimed for those of you that are listening to help you be successful in real estate investing or truthfully anything that you want to do. I, I suspect you're interested in real estate investing, which is why you're listening right now, but um, make it action oriented. If you can like help people hate, help people walk away from um, this show today and know like, here's what I'm going to do next. Here's how I can improve my situation based on what's between my ears. Right? So go ahead and get us started. Are you looking to change your life through real estate investing? If you're interested in either getting started or taking your business to the next level, please check out FlipNerd's private program at theinvestormachine.com. This is the most robust real estate investor coaching, networking, and mastermind on the planet and designed for your success. If you're ready to roll up your sleeves, ready to take personal responsibility for your own success, and ready to dive into a world-class instructional coaching program that provides you step-by-step -step instruction to help you achieve financial freedom, then you should apply today. Spaces are limited and candidates are only considered after an application and interview process. Our 12-month investor program is unparalleled. Think you might be a fit? Learn more today at theinvestormachine.com. What's between my ears, right? So go ahead and get us started. Sure. So I, I know that we've got people on the line that are like super experienced investors that are that are crushing it. And I also know that we probably have some some newer folks and probably some people in the middle. Right. Yep. Yep. So no matter what yep. where you're at, I think like your overarching uh, attitude, at least for me, uh, is kind of like a go giver attitude. So I don't look to see like how I can pull value from other people. I look to see how I can give first. And once I've given, then I get. And um, if I do that with a, with a sincere, uh, I don't know, like a sincere true heart, then uh, that makes that, um, that, that giving mindset uh, genuine. And I found that what I put out comes back to me. And so that's something that, and when I say giving mindset, I, I just mean like, how can you give value to any interaction that you're having with somebody? So, you know, what I found to be super key in, uh, in, in, in making my, uh, my mindset a little bit better and, and positive is to surround myself with, with other active investors, not, yeah. not, not people that want to invest, but people that actually are and are doing it on a consistent basis. And, you know, it, wherever you're at, you know, so. For anything. Um, and if you do that consistently enough and they're a good person that you actually want to be around, it'll come back to you. But in the process, you you just get to connect with other active people that are actually doing stuff and right. action gets action and so it's just a big uh you know it's it's just a big cycle right so it's that's just been my experience yeah yeah so talk a little bit about that in that regard to a new investor so i agree with you i mean i'm i'm in a couple of mastermind groups uh i have a coaching uh, program and I think when you're inside of those programs, um, it's a different mindset than somebody that's like brand new, has never done a deal, 
and um, the people that they might want to surround themselves with aren't willing to be part of that circle yet in some instances. Uh, so talk about when you're brand new, when you it certainly, at least it, um, a lot of people believe this when they're brand new, that they don't really know what they could give to somebody or how they could add benefit to somebody or add value to somebody that seemingly has a lot more experience of what they want. So maybe share that for people that are like brand new that um, want to get started and they just don't see like, what could I do to add value to somebody else? I think the biggest thing is to, to show that you're genuine and to ask good questions. So, you know, like yeah. I don't mind, um, I, I don't mind helping somebody that, uh, that is newer if they're, if they're sincere and they, they don't waste my time, but they ask good questions and they'll, yeah. they're coachable and they're steerable. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy, yeah. I'm happy to, to pay it forward and give my time and my energy to somebody that's coming up and is kind of cutting their teeth. If, if whatever their, whatever their interaction with me is, uh, is either encouraging to me, which I love encouragement, even from someone that's not as experienced. Right. So I'll take that. Yeah. Or, you yeah. know, somebody that provides, uh, you know, like, Hey, I've got this opportunity. What do you think of it? Well, at, at least that person's bringing a uh, bringing a deal to me, right? So, like that deal yeah. might be a deal that I can make yeah. money on. Like I'm going to listen and I'm going to pay attention to that person. So, even if it's not a great deal, even it, it's they're trying, right? So I got to respect that they're trying. And if they don't do it in a in a pushy, needy way, then there's value to me in them trying. And so I would say. You know, it could be a uh, it could be an article like a like I'm talking about uh, now. You know, an encouraging article. Hey, did you see this? Like then, I, I've done that to to mentors of mine and befriended them simply because of of like, hey man, did you see this? This this might relate to what you're doing. It cost me nothing but a text or an email or a Facebook message, but you know, they might be able to do something with it. Or it started a conversation on a uh, like I'm not calling that guy asking to pick his brain and take him to lunch. I'm saying like, Hey, what'd you think of this? Right. Yeah. So it's a different conversation yeah. Yeah. and it's, yeah. um, yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. I'm glad you said that. Cause I was just thinking the same thing. Cause you, you after you, and be, especially because I put myself out there so much, like, you know, I, I try to, we try to add a lot of value. I mean, we've spent three and a half years now with Flipner trying to add value and, um, and, but, you know, you, I do get those messages like, Hey, can I, um, you know, they don't necessarily use these exact words, but can I buy you coffee and try to extract everything I can out of you for an hour? A very one-sided. And you're like, well, no, I mean, I, I can go through Starbucks on my way to the office on my own, <laughs> you know? Uh, right. but yeah, the people that are like, I, in fact, there's a guy that I'm supposed to talk to tomorrow morning. I've never talked to you before, but he kind of applied for our coaching program. He saw that I was going to hire a for a position. He's like interested in doing that. He's like, keeps like just finding some way to get involved with me. And I appreciate that hustle because I like people that hustle. Um, I don't know where that'll go, but certainly the people that are like, Hey, can I just come extract something from you and don't even appear to have any intention to try to give back or add value to me? It's hard. It's hard to, you know, we're, we're busy. It's hard to spend time with those people. Right. Well, 100%, but it, yeah. yeah. And so like yeah. you, you kind of hit on it there, right? So for instance, like if somebody's interacting, uh, so you're asking for actionable ideas that somebody that doesn't have a lot of knowledge or experience can benefit somebody that's maybe a further, a little bit further along. Right. So yeah. that that's like kind of exactly what you described is, is really routine. So somebody that would like, if I put something out on Facebook and somebody shared that post and like edified me or someone else or whatever, like there's a tiny bit of value there that it costs that person nothing to do, but I, you know, like they're giving, right? So I guarantee you, like if you're trying to get somebody's attention and you did something like that, I don't know, three or four times, yeah. chances are like you're, yeah. you're it's going to be more receptive. You're going to be yeah, more yeah. receptive to that person. Yeah. Yeah. So it costs them zero. Yeah. They made you know, I don't know. That's just an example. But some sure. other things uh, from a mindset development standpoint that, that I think are really key 
are uh, to feed your mind good food, right? So what I mean by that is like be conscious of what you're reading and be conscious of what you're listening to and be conscious of who you're hanging out with. Um, you know, you can, you, you, you really have to control what's coming in um, as much as you can because that can really put you in a funk or get you discouraged. Um, so a perfect example for this, uh, Mike, is uh, I used to be an absolute news junkie. Like I would be, uh, I'd have cable news on all the time. Uh, I'd listen to talk radio. I'd be on the internet. Um, like I was very, very, very conscious of what was going on in the world. Right. Yeah. And what is, what's out there? 99 if it le if it bleeds it leads right that's the news motto yeah. so you're constantly about like wars and accidents and crooked politicians and whatever whatever right but the reality is none of that stuff really affects me on a daily basis like aside right. from the weather man, yeah aside from the weatherman telling me if it's going to rain none of that stuff plays in to my daily life at all and the reality is, like, even if I really wanted to have a big impact, on that, like, I, I can't. I mean, that's just the reality, right? right? So turn that stuff off. It doesn't help you. And it can really put you in a tailspin if you're not careful. So, like, if you turn on CNN Business and, you know, the stock market fell 2,000 points, well, you might think that there's no buyers out there for your deals. Or you might think that no sellers out there for your deals or whatever. Right. But it's, it's in your head. So I, I would just encourage you guys to, to be very conscious of what you allow in your space. And so feed your, feed your mind, good stuff. And that could be podcasts. It could be audio books. It could be people that you associate with. Um, but I, I just think that's super, super key. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, next thing related to mindset, um, the one with the most certainty wins. So I think uh, we were at uh, ClickFunnels together, right? And um, yep. I'm going to draw a yep. blank on uh, the guy's name, but essentially he looks like uh, like a bigger version of The Rock. Um, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, his message, and it resonated with me, is the person with the most certainty wins. And I think if you steal your mind – and you're confident in what you know and and how it applies to what you're doing uh, that even if you don't have all the even if you don't have everything just right if you're certain of it it goes a long way in convincing others and so that's Absolutely. the that's um just another little mindset thing that i think is super important yeah no doubt about it are you talking about garrett white no, it wasn't Garrett. It no. was the big, uh, big Samoan guy. Okay. He looks know. like I mean, he looks like the Rock, but on steroids. <laughs> the Rock on steroids. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't remember who that was, but bigger, yeah, there's no doubt bigger, that. Uh, what's that? A bigger version of the Rock. Yeah. 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 I don't remember who that was, but yeah, that's great though. I, there's no doubt that uh, if you believe you can, if you believe you can't do it, then you're right. Right. 100%. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, next, I want to talk about habits. So I think, um, you know, mindset's super cool. Like, I, I think some of the some of the ways that we feed those mind our mindset is through our habits. And so like I was saying before, uh, like if you have on, on a, in a consistent way, a way to um, to feed your mind positive stuff, um, you, you can you can have a much more you can have much more control of your thoughts and of your mindset. So, like an example of a habit that I've developed, uh, which has really been like, extremely beneficial to me, and it's it's really simple stuff. So don't 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 laugh at me, but I, I want to share no, with you laughing, just man. like one thing that. <laughs> Yeah, I want to share with you like one thing that I've learned and I've put into practice and that it's been like uh, it's really been a, a pretty cool game changer. So um, a, a book that I came across was an it's an audio book um, and I'm going to draw a blank on it. It's but it's uh, Hal 
Elrod. Yeah, um, Morning Miracle. Morning Miracle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so from that book, uh, I, I developed a habit that I've put into practice. And it's, uh, I call it my wake up habit. I'm sure uh, Hal has a different name for it. I kind of like took his idea and made it for me, but uh, it's really easy, right? So um, like I have a bedtime ritual and then a wake up ritual, but the wake up ritual starts with the bedtime. So uh, I have a glass of water. I set it next to the bed. I, before I go to bed, I program my brain to say, hey, I need to wake up at this time, whatever time, it is in the morning. And for me, it's, it's five o'clock because I found that when I wake up a little bit earlier, uh, I feel better. Right. So the bedtime uh, habit is a glass of water. And then I program my brain to wake up at that certain time. And the thought process is when I wake up, I'm going to feel rested and relaxed. Right. Mm. So that's how I go to sleep. And so I've programmed myself that when I actually hit the bed, I, I fall asleep instead of tossing and turning and everything else, right? right? So it's really, sometimes it's really hard for us as entrepreneurs to turn our brains off. They're constantly going, right? So if yeah, I have absolutely. a bedtime ritual, yeah. then, then I can, or not even, it's a bedtime habit. But if I do that, then, then I go to sleep easier. And then I wake up easier. When I wake up, I drink that glass of water immediately. It starts your body going. And then I go to my desk where the night before I've laid out my, my notebook or my journal and I've laid out my reading material for the, the morning. And I, I just kind of go through that morning habit. And part of that morning habit is some quiet devotional time. So, you know, it, it, I, I think everybody has an inherent need for some spiritual food as well. That's what I use my time for. Um, but regardless of where you're at there, like the, the time spent is like the kids aren't awake. The phone's not ringing yet. I don't open my, I don't open Facebook or my email so that like I allow other stuff to come in. That's like my right. time. Right. And, um, you know, that might you're, be the only quiet time I have all day. Right. I'm very intentional. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you so, know what's going to happen because you've set that time aside and said, I mean, this is life is crazy these days, right? People just, I mean, I, I, everybody, it's so easy to get caught up in so many things to where life is just kind of happening to you. Uh, it sounds like what you're kind of talking about here is to just be intentional about, I have my time. I get up early. I will say that I, I sometimes I get into bad habits, but there was a time when, um, several months back where I was creating my uh, group training program called the investor machine. And, um, I just couldn't, I just wasn't happening fast enough. And this was crazy because I'm kind of a night owl, but I started to get up at 3 a.m. Uh, but wow. I, there were no distractions. Like everybody was sleeping but me. Um, I didn't feel the need to like open my email and all those things like, like I do during the day because truthfully, there's very little activity going on. No Facebook, any of that. I had no distractions. And I just, I felt like in that like two or three hour period, I could get like eight to 10 hours worth of work that I would normally do done just because I was purely focused on just that. I mean, I, I knew it and everybody knew it. And so, yeah, that's, that's powerful stuff. Now I don't get up at 3 AM anymore, <laughs> not right now, but if I really yeah. needed to, you know, I, I would do it again. I mean, it, it was, it, it was pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, since I've developed uh, that habit and I, you know, it came from feeding my mind, good, positive stuff. Um, you know, I've got a ton of value out of it. And I, yeah. frankly, I, if I miss that morning or that morning habit, if I break that cycle, um, the day's, the day's gone. Like it, mm -hmm. it just, it's not the same. So, um, super intentional about it. If you have to start it the night before and you almost have to plan it out the night before, but then, yeah. so it's that quiet time, but then I've started a journal in the morning. And I've started to make my uh, my action plan for the day uh, in the morning, and um, you know I I found that like I was making it the night before, but then it was just like a laundry list of everything. If I make it in the morning, uh, then I can kind of prioritize and try to knock out the big rocks first. And yep. um, I don't know, that's yep. just what that's what's working for me. So that's awesome. Um, which kind of, and then you know we talked a little bit offline, but you know. 
some of that, some of that, um, some of what I want to talk about next, I guess, is routines. So uh, one of the ways that I'm getting a lot of my deals is just by being, um, I, I have a couple key sources and if I can hit those sources on a, on a, on a routine basis, then I'm able to do deals with very little marketing money. Right. Mm, wow. And so the, what's, what's working for me at the moment is, is being, being the nexus of, of activity. And so what I've got going on, uh, Mike is basically like a, a routine where on a Sunday night, I'll make a list of all the people that I want to talk to, uh, during the week. And I keep like a running list and I'll try to do it on Mondays, but Mondays get pretty crowded pretty quick. But what I'm doing on, on a Sunday or frankly on a Sunday night, typically is I'm, I'm texting, emailing, or messaging, uh, people. I call it like my, my top 20, essentially top 20 investors in my market that are doing deals that I know are active that either I've made money with already or we're interacting a lot and there's something there. We just haven't done a deal yet. Right. Mm, okay. And so what I'm doing is, is I'm messaging all those people and my message is really short and sweet. It's Hey, how can we make money together this week? That's it. That's it. Yeah. But it starts, a, it starts a conversation, right? Yeah. And so I'm looking to sell deals and I'm looking to buy deals, but if I can be on either side of that equation, like I'm a, I'm a happy guy. And so, you know, I'm, I'm looking for needs and I'm looking to fill those needs. And so basically I kind of have a call, like a two column list essentially buyers and sellers. And so I'm just looking for what somebody has to sell and what somebody has to buy. And if I can get in between that any which way and have an equity position, then I, I, I'm in the money and I'm doing deals. That's awesome. And so are these, are so these uh, for the se sellers, are these, are these primarily wholesalers that you're communicating with? It could be anybody, but yes, I mean, they're active investors. So it might right. be, um, you know, we got to remember like if you're an active investor and you've, you've got some momentum and you're actually doing deals, you can be a, a wholesaler and you can be a motivated wholesaler or you can be a fix and flip buyer. But if you've bought too much, you need to sell that deal. Right. right. Or if you're a right. land, if you're a landlord and you own a bunch of rentals, but there's, there's one out there that's empty, that's giving you a pain in the butt, you might want to sell that. You want, might want to sell it quick. Right. So yep. if, if I can reach out to those people in a positive way and say, Hey, how can we make money together this week? I've, I've opened, I've asked an open-ended question that they, they want to answer with me being the answer. And so it doesn't cost any money. It just costs a little bit of time and you're benefiting that person because you, how can we make money together this week? And you're mm -hmm. reaching out to them. And, and if you do that and you do it routinely on a consistent basis, like some of my guys, they'll, they laugh at me because they know that on Sunday night, that's, that's what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. They're like, hey. <clears throat> that's awesome though. Cause there's no doubt. I mean, sometimes uh, if you're wholesaling a lot of properties, you know, you, you may know, Hey, I've got this one coming up in two days and I'm just going to blast out to my list and I'm going to blow this thing out. But getting a message like that, they're like, Oh, this guy sent me like five text messages. Let, let me give him a first crack at it. Like there's just stuff that happens. Yeah. Productivity happens from activity, right? Like you stuff that just kind of, I guess, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, but, um, you know, they say that, uh, well, I'm going to screw this up. Gosh, something about where basically luck meets at the intersection of, uh, opportunity and hard work or something like that. Right. So you positioned yourself to be more lucky if you want to use kind of air quotes lucky here, yes. because you've put yourself yes. in a position where people, you know, they feel they need to respond to you one way or another. Like, Hey, I don't have anything this week. Or like, you know what, there's this thing going on. Like, let me tell you about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And That's so awesome. it, it I've just seen, I've seen tremendous benefit from it. It costs zero dollars. I've made it part of my routine and it, 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 it pays dividends. So, um, you know, that's an example of something I'm doing. Um, but whatever it is, 
Um, you know, another one that I'm that I'm doing that I've seen a lot of benefit from is just being consistent, right? So, consistent's boring, but consistent is where where the bills get paid. So, you know, I think that even in a competitive market, like we're certainly in a competitive cycle at the moment, um, from a trying to get more inventory. Um, I think there's, I know for a fact that there's deals uh, on MLS and that there's deals on auction sites. You just have to be consistent in the way that you approach those deals. And, and if, if you can, if you're consistent and you have a routine to back it up, you, you know, you can, you can pull deals out of any marketing cycle or any marketing yeah. source. Yeah. So, yeah. And all the stuff you're talking about feeds together. Cause if you have the mindset that that stuff doesn't work, and therefore, why would I waste my time doing it? Or if you have the habit, the bad habit, we didn't, we didn't really talk about bad habits, right? A lot of people have bad habits that, that inhibit um, both mindset and, and uh, some of the other things we talked about, right? So you're just like, if, if in your free time, you're always like bellied up at a happy hour somewhere, you're probably not getting to some of the other things that are more of the good habits. Now I'm all for a good margarita. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, there you <laughs> you would admit, right? There's some bad habits that we find ourselves falling into, sitting down in front of the TV to kind of binge watch stuff or whatever that definitely don't help you in terms of achieving your goals, right? No, 100 percent, 100 percent. So yeah, yeah, awesome, man. Well, um, what would you recommend? I know you you mentioned, and I can't remember if it's Miracle Morning or Morning Miracle from Hal Hal. Right? I read the book to you. Um, it's a great book. I'll, I'll add a link down below uh, the video here. We'll, we'll get a link for it. Um, but uh, that's a great book. I mean, I, I would say probably if you, if people, if, if they're interested in what you're talking about here today, that's a great book to go check out. What else would you recommend if, if people, if this resonates with somebody and they're like, this is good, I really, but I don't know where to get started right now. What should they, what can they start doing differently tonight or tomorrow morning to kind of move in this direction of, living uh in a way that that they're kind of have a more balanced mindset have good routines good habits all those things where, where do they start at well i mean i think the actionable things that, that i would encourage somebody to do is is one like to take take action and read uh hal elrod's book i mean you you kind of hit it right there but yeah. even just with the the rough blueprint that I gave somebody um, when we were talking about that, uh, I think if somebody put that in action for a week, they would see immediate benefit just from yep. having a nightly yep. a habit and a, a morning habit and some quiet time in the morning to plan out their day. Uh, I think if you did that, um, you, you within a week, you'd see some immediate benefits. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Obi, thanks for being with us today. Man, I'm glad we were able to make it happen. Thank you for your yeah. patience, and uh, I'm super excited to be on here. So, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, honored, and uh, I'd just like to thank you for, you know, all the great content that you put out, man. It's it's some amazing stuff. I've been, like I said, a, a fan for a long time. So, um, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. So, uh, for those of you that are listening, this was episode number 357. Actually, we're getting up there. Um, definitely wow. appreciate you being with us today. Uh, um, Obi, if folks wanted to reach out to you, they wanted to kind of learn more about you, where, where would they go? Yeah. So find me on Facebook. It's really simple. Just OBI, uh, last name Dorsey, D-O-R-S-E-Y. Uh, or you could email me if you like, uh, OBI at freedomholdingsusa.com. Freedom Holdings. I've brought this down here. Awesome. We'll add a couple links down below for the video here for any of the any of you that uh, want to uh, connect with Obi. So Obi, thanks again. Great, great information. This is this is really powerful stuff, and this is really fundamental stuff, right, to your success, whether you're interested in real estate investing or really anything, right? Mike, I'm telling you what, man. I I don't care what you're doing. It all starts with that mindset, and it's super yeah. key. So yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks again for joining us. Everybody, thanks for joining us for episode number 357. We're going to see you next week on another episode. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the FlipNerd.com Investing Show. If you're not yet an elite member of FlipNerd, you're missing out. We have tons of great training, including a new detailed masterclass published each month and live training webinars with experts twice a month. Plus, you'll get access to all of our archives 
where we already have a growing library of master classes and other training videos. Elite members also get membership in our incredible online mastermind group, where many of the top real estate investors from across the country, including many of the hundreds of guests I've had on the show in the past, are already members. Whether you're brand new, looking to get started, or a veteran, you simply must join today. I promise you won't be disappointed. To learn more or join today, please visit flipnerd.com slash lab. That's flipnerd.com slash lab. See you on the next show.